As defined by Tedward's Dictionary, a fanboy is a person who has become irrationally obsessed with the brand. Being a brand loyalist does not necessarily make you a fanboy. But if you maintain this sort of religious infallibility of a brand, then yes, you're a fanboy. So what's the problem with being a fanboy? You miss out on so many opportunities to drive amazing cars. You sound like a fool on forums and Facebook when you cannot concede that maybe the brand or the vehicle or the style of car that you're in love with has faults. Let's take BMW for instance. Now, I have two BMWs and I've made videos where I've talked about what I like about my cars and what I dislike about my cars. I've spoken ill of the E92 M3's thimble of a fuel tank and how that means that it can't really be used as a GT car. And when I say things like this, I'll receive comments telling me to go buy a Honda or a Prius. And that's just not the point. I understand that these people love the brand, they love the car, and they think the M3 is perfect. But if you can't find flaws in a vehicle, then that just means you don't know what you're talking about. Every vehicle has flaws, but sometimes those flaws are also the things that make them great. For example, my M3 is very stiff. That makes it phenomenal on windy roads. However, it does make it kind of a bear to drive on long, long highway trips. The S65 V8, fantastic. It sings to 8,000 RPMs. However, it does not have an overdrive. So when you are doing 80 on the highway, you're turning it over 3,200 RPM. Or let's take the E39 M5. I would argue that it's one of the best super sedans ever made. However, I would also argue that the steering feel leaves a lot to be desired. A fanboy might flame me and tell me that I'm crazy and again, I should go buy a Prius, I should go buy a Civic. So here's the thing with fanboys. They tend to be kind of dense and boring because they don't want to taste anything outside of the realm of what they're in love with. It's kind of like having a child that's a really picky eater and you're gonna hand them something that you know they're gonna love. Maybe that thing they're gonna love is a front engine rear wheel drive sports car, but all they wanna drive is all wheel drive. So in the end, it's really the fanboy who's missing out because they don't get to try something new. It's really important that you don't mistake fanboyism for taste. For example, my taste leans more towards a naturally aspirated rear wheel drive car. But I have no problem conceding the fact that if there was an Evo exiting a wet corner in front of me, he's gonna pull away. That doesn't mean I don't wanna go drive the Evo. Of course I wanna go drive the Evo. But if the Evo or STI guy can't concede the fact that maybe it understeers a little bit, then he's really missing the boat on the fun that is a rear wheel drive sports car. And I would be missing out on the turbo all wheel drive car. They tend to be the loudest, they tend to be the most aggressive in the comment section. Being a fanboy also puts you in a position where you're forced to like things that maybe you don't like. For example, I'm not a huge fan of the M4 GTS. I respect it, but I don't get the fizz when I see it. But I'm not gonna let the fact that it's a BMW dictate whether I like it or not. Cars are meant to be driven, not defended. So really the PSA here is, don't let the fanboys get to you. They're the ones missing out because they're the ones who aren't trying new cars. They aren't experiencing motorsports in its entirety because they're locked in on one thing and they've got tunnel vision. 